GoDaddy.com is a good sponsor of more stories. We got to give some love to GoDaddy.com. Here's the cool contest. Go to GoDaddy.com and create your own website. Look, Mark Henry is on the podcast. WWE superstar and actual world's strongest man. Maybe you are a, a strong man. Maybe you're the 400th strongest man in New Jersey and you want to put up a website where there's photos of you pulling uh, little pedicabs across Manhattan with your feet because that's your day job. And you can have 400th strongest man in the world.com. That's what I'm asking you to do. We're having a contest. Start a new website. Make it good. Go to GoDaddy.com. They're offering my listeners a great new special offer for its most popular .com domain name. And I want ones that are specific and inside jokes about the More Stories podcast. Put your name on it. If you win this contest, I'll send you a ton of t-shirts. I'll shake your hand. I know We'll figure something out, but you'll win. You'll win big. And you know what? We'll do a whole show where we dedicate it to you and we say your name over and over and over. If you want to enter the promo code STORIES at checkout at GoDaddy.com to redeem your new or transfer.com for only $2.49 for the first year of registration or click on the GoDaddy banner at jmore.com. All good things happen at jmore.com. Your favorite baseball team just won a game. You know why? Because they went to jmore.com. Well, what's that? Your sister needed a kidney? GoDaddy.com will tell you, go to jmore.com. We're giving away kidneys at jmore.com. You need, how about this? Givingawaykidneys.com. That's a URL right there. How about that? Alonzo Bowden has one kidney.com. I got to go deep for y'all? You got to, how about Bobby Lee lived in a haunted house and was possessed by Native American ghosts.com. <laughs> <laughs> Do it. GoDaddy.com. Enter stories. Impress us. Some limitations apply. Please see website for details. Go to jmore.com. Click the GoDaddy link. The offer code is stories. This is a fun contest. Get in on it. Peace. Put your name on it. Just put your name on it. That's all I say. Be a man or a woman. Put your name on it. Well, I'd like to hear about it, potheads. How the fuck you gonna know how to be great if you don't study greatness? Look at the game change. Donuts. If you wanna battle with either that you will, I guess we're with You know, you're not a bad looking man, Mr. Gals. But you are, Blanche. You are in that chair. There's something wrong with us. Something very, very wrong with us. Hey, man. Yeah, use that Amazon ad. Go to jmore.com, click Amazon banner at jmore.com, and you can buy cool things. You can buy Mark Henry stuff. Mark Henry, WWE superstar, and you are an ultimate warrior. What's up, buddy? Man, I'm doing good, man. Out here in the garage, the man cave. You think this is a man cave? This is a man cave, man. I mean, well, mm, there's no naked girls on the wall, so I guess, you know, no, there's only one eight girl in his house. Upstairs, that's it. Ooh, you be getting it in, I'm just... <laughs> well, yeah, it's kind of how married life yeah, works, Mark Henry. And... <laughs> <laughs> Mark Henry is the world's man. strongest man. You've literally lifted millions of pounds. That's not a joke. In my, in my life, I've lifted millions. Do you think WWE, you're like one of those guys, like Rob Van Dam's been on and Stone Cold, these guys, like Rob Van Dam's like a, a, a real, like he loves the martial arts and stuff. Like you were an Olympian. No one ever talks about the fact that you were an Olympian. Do you think being in the WWE is kind of taken away, like that just becomes your identity? Do you ever want people to just go, hey man, they got, I'm, a fucking, I'm an Olympian, give me a little love here. You know what, there's, there's times where I, I have to tell people, look, I was somebody before the business and... For a long time, I dumbed it down because people were insecure, and I had to not, uh, like, throw that card out there. But um, now, at the end, you know, I'm at, I'm at, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel now. I can, um, I can tell people, hey, you know, like, show, show me my respect. You know, I was, uh, I've been on two Olympic teams, been um, twice one of the 400 best athletes on the planet, and that, you know, it carries a little weight. 
That doesn't really sound that impressive when you say one of the top 400. Like, there's a lot of dudes. 400 going. people and the billions of people on this planet? That, I don't know. That don't sound impressive like to you? Like, top 100 sounds cool. Top 200, you go, all right, they extended the list a little bit. Top 300, you're like, eh, I guess. And then 400, you're like, who cares? Like, Larry Bird's up there. billions. I'm talking Where's about Where's Larry Bird in the top 400? All the leaves. Let's all talk- the leaves in your yard, and there's <laughs> one leaf. Are you a leaf? I'm a leaf, man. <laughs> How many white guys on that 400 list? Where's Larry Bird on that list of 400 Larry athletes? Bird, Larry Bird is up there, man, because he has street cred, too. Yeah, he did. He punched <laughs> brothers in the mouth and didn't, didn't have no qualms about it. I went to black barbershops when I was doing more sports on ESPN, and we had a segment. It was just called Black Barbershop, and I would go, what would you rather do, this or that? that you know, and that's all you got to do at a black barbershop, and they take it from there. And we were at two Momars in the Valley and in the Cut in the Valley. We went to these two places. I go, who would you rather have on your basketball team, Clyde Drexler or Larry Bird? I had to pick a brother. Like, if you say Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson, they're going to win every time. But I had, to, I had to make it like an argument for these guys. Right, right. Man, not one brother picked Clyde Drexler. They all picked Larry Bird. Now, Larry Bird was <laughs> – that, that, that ain't even a good comparison. You <laughs> – well, I know that now, and that's the thing. Is now I'm in a black barber shop trying to convince black men they should have voted for Clyde Drexler, and I'm like, "What about Clyde? Clyde the Glide? Come on!" And they're like, "No, nah, man, Larry Bird is bad now. Come on!" And there's old guys sweeping up the floor. I go, "Clyde the Glide?" He goes, "He only glided about three or four times now." <laughs> <laughs> now, if you just said Barkley, but uh, so I'll take Drexler over Barkley any day. Get out of town, Barkley. That's terrible. Terrible. That's terrible. So you have the world record in the snatch. I had the I had the American record in the snatch. In the snatch, the, the world record was like thirty pounds heavier than what I done, and um, you know I used to always make the um, the Mark Henry disclaimer. I did it drug free. Yeah, you the fans should know that you have all your records are completely drug free records. You That's never right. brought it out. So is that I didn't wear equipment. I wore singlets. What's equipment? You know, people wore like super suits, you know what? double They're ply, cape? you know, denim and stretchy material and stuff. How does that help you lift weights? Well I mean some of these guys could put these suits on and they can lift a hundred, two hundred pounds more. How come oh because it just holds everything because in because it just keeps you bound and it gives a resistance that you know your muscles can't do. That's why. That's why ladies wear spanks. I still kick they. Oh, yeah. Well, because they can lift more weight. You know, I'm, I'm gonna put out there. My wife, she she wears spanks too, <laughs> so she can support you. Just so she can keep me off of. <laughs> you have to be on the bottom just so she stays alive. No, man, I'm talented, man. I'm flexible. <laughs> yeah, you move you well know, for a big I, man. I watched a lot of porn. You know, I, I gotta tell you something. I got Wik- moves. Wikipedia, four hundred eighteen pounds, my ass. I got moves, man. You got moves like Jagger. I got moves like Jagger. What's the go-to talk- Mark Henry move? Man, the flip around, man. You gotta you raise the arm up like that. You pull the leg through, and you, you know, it's, it's complicated. It's com- It shouldn't be though. But there's a lot of oil involved. You have to oil. Oh. Now, I didn't know that, see, the fact that you did all this drug-free, I didn't know, is powerlifting, like guys that set world records in weightlifting competitions, is that a huge, like, steroid industry? It is. I mean, that was, you know, one of the things is I, I didn't want to embarrass the sport and have it taken out of the Olympics like wrestling has, you know, been done. Um, so I, I kind of swallowed my pride for the sport. And I could have blew him up big. Brian Gumble was one of those. And if I ever see him, I'm going to cuss him out. Um, I might just have to go on to take the charge. But he was one of those called me a crybaby. Uh, well, why are you crying? You know, Marion Jones, she she competes against steroid abusers, and she still goes out and wins. And he named about three or four people. All of them, everybody he named, got caught from taking drugs. So why does that bother you? It bothers me because they were cheating. I mean, I told people, I don't care about them taking steroids. They can take all the steroids they want to, but just don't compete against people that's not. Yeah. That's that's my only qualm. Which, where were the cities when you were in the Olympics? Man, Barcelona was my first one. And Atlanta. Young Mark Henry just Young, went wrong. But, oh, Atl- hot Atlanta? Man. Young Mark Henry? No, no. That, Atlanta, I was, I was old then. Oh. I, I wasn't old, but I was... Um, you were black. 
I was still black. Still black. I mean, Brother man in Atlanta, world's strongest shoot, man in Atlanta. Yeah, Come on. Cut, yeah, cut me and smoke come out. I'm, I mean, I, the, Atlanta was one of those that, um, I took a lot of, I took a lot of pride in, in being on that team because, um, we had the worst time getting everybody qualified. It, and it came all down to the clutch. It came down to the Olympic trials and, um, I had the best day of my life. I've still yet to lift like I did at the Olympic trials. I mean, I competed in the two Olympic games. I did pretty good, but that Olympic trials, if I would have done the lifts that I did at the Olympic trials and Olympics, you know, I'd have placed in the top five. So I, I, I kind of had an off day. See, that's weird to me to hear because I'm not like a weightlifter, obviously. But, you know, baseball players, you have good days, you have bad days. You throw the ball, it moves differently. Football players, you make a certain cut, you throw the ball, you tackle better. But I don't understand how a weightlifter, and you can enlighten me on this, like you can only lift what you can lift. Like the, my max is no, my max. But no, you're telling me there's not, days where your max is more how? Yeah, you can do like Neo, man. You got to believe, you know, and that's, that's, that's the way lifting is. You can psych yourself up. Or you can psych yourself out. It's very, very mental. Really? Uh, oh my God! It's, but how much can the body? There's got to be a limit. It's kind of like that. That you know, that mother, the car that falls on the mother, or some heavy falls on a kid, and the mother goes over there and lifts it up off a kid. Yeah. Like you can control that. You can control it. It's what just would you harder say is the, to control. What's, what's the rate? What's the flux of how much weight is mental? A hundred pounds. What's worth more, your mental state or that little denim? suit that the dudes wear to add weight you know it's a lot of those guys that wore those little suits that i still kick their rear end because i would go and take plates off people's piles and they would be worried about what the what the hell is wrong Why, hey where are you going with that I was, i'm finna use it you know and they out of their game at that point you know you I, got in their head because you're taking I'm in their head you know I, I play games and People tried to play with me, but I would just smile it off because, one, I knew they couldn't kick my ass. You know, I mean, I, I kind of rolled with a little bit of intimidation, but um, I also, like, there were points where I can make it completely silent. I could block out sound. I, I wouldn't hear nothing. My people, and it finished the lift. <sighs> it's like somebody turned the stereo on, and, and I could hear it. And, and, and most people, Really high-level athletes uh, have been able to control the environment that they lived in. Sounds very Buddhist. In. Sounds very Buddhist. Sounds very, control. very technical. What, controlling sound in your own head? Tuning yeah, up the sound is technical? Man, you got to be able to control it. Take focus and discipline and, and to be consistent enough to uh, be able to do that on a daily basis, you know, it's hours and hours and hours of work that go into it. Uh, speaking of Buddha, click the Amazon banner, jmore.com, and I will read it. Lee Kaiser. Banner? There's a little bit. It's just an ad. Like, you click on it. Oh, I thought you said batter. Like, the, batter? dip the fish in. I should fry. have a little. Oh, I should have some batter. Make a little game out of it. Uh, check this dude out. Lee Kaiser goes to jmore.com. He clicks the Amazon banner. Wanted to let you know, JJ, I made a purchase today at jmore.com. Click in the Amazon link. I bought a book called Buddha's Brain from my younger brother who just finished college and is about to embark on his journey into the real world. And another book called Whole Foods for the Whole Family from my good friend Emily, who is extremely passionate about macrobiotics, nutrition, and healthy living. Uh, love you, JJ. Your friend, Lee Kaiser. Whole Foods, That's a you could have written that book because you eat all of it. Everything. You don't miss a damn meal. Man, I, I'm like the, you know, you see people that's on drugs looking for stuff in the carpet. <laughs> I do that with crumbs. <laughs> is, is, that a, is that a chicken crumb? I, yeah, I just, you see guys fishing with corn niblets, you're like, give me the corn niblet, man. Get, How about I eat your corn just, bread? Just Debo them out of their food. Like, I, I do that sometimes. I just look at people in restaurants like... <laughs> You, you gonna eat all of that, man? Yeah. Fuck him. Let let him get his own cornbread, his own portion of cornbread. Ray, <laughs> fuck him. Remember movie Life? How did you not get that part? How would I eat your? Because I'm not bread? out here in L.A., but I'm about to be. Man, fuck him. Let man, him I'm get his own. If you want big cornbread, black guy roll and that's that would have been yours in the movie Life. You would have been perfect. How about your corn? Man, fuck him. If you want, you want cornbread. Let him go to the front of the if line. If something happened to me in the next like six months, it's because a black actor. 
a big giant black actor got mad that I came to LA and started getting work. <laughs> Well, so, like if you start, get murdered, start at the top. How the hell do you hide Mark Henry's body? <laughs> you can't. You just slit his throat, just let him bleed out in the street, and just say it's a speed bump. <laughs> you can't. What is somebody going to put you in a Coleman cooler, chop you like, put him in that freezer down in the gra- in the in the dump? A container ship in Long Beach wouldn't hold you. <laughs> six six, five hundred pounds, my man. You're all wow, of it. Come on, man. Hey, it's a podcast now. Hey, come yeah, on. I'm, I'm six five. Five ten, one eighty. Definitely six five. Uh, one more, and then we'll get going, because I can ask you more about the Atlanta Olympics, specifically about something that happened. Uh, JJ, since I used your banner, happy to do it, to purchase a portable camping stove for my upcoming trip to Colorado for the fish shows at the end of the month. You keep telling us you'll read our emails out loud if we do. So here goes. Love the podcast. I'm basically a fan of all your work. The greatest exception being when you filled in for Rome. Now you got your own show. Everybody needs to get his balls out of their proverbial mouths enough to realize that this that his I mean, I'm not gonna talk bad about anybody. He likes my show. You can't talk bad about anybody else. Lastly, I know that when you originally started your podcast, I was under the umbrella of the Kevin Smith podcast. Can you tell us how that came to be? Uh, all right, that's Mark in uh, Durham, North Carolina. Uh, I'll make it quick, Mark, because Mark Henry's here. Is that you? Is this you? No, Mark with a C. Kevin Smith uh, basically like signed me like a record label, and then I realized I could do this by myself and ma- make like a living out of it. And I asked Kevin Smith to help me break free, and he was really cool, and he really helped me uh, do it. So thanks for your email. Do you ever go camping? I have been camping. Do people just call like the park ranger when they see you they, walking back? They think the Sasquatch is out there. Oh, please don't steal our bottled water. Do people like little shrines? Don't feed the bears. You have to wear bright orange, a sign that says, I am a human being. <laughs> like a chalkboard around your neck. That it's ain't even right. See that? I'm, you're saying all that shit because I'm at your house. I don't give don't, a fuck. Man, I'm going to get arrested out here. And, you know, Jay live in this nice neighborhood, cars driving by. Yeah, walk, that's real. That's people, <laughs> people walking pets. That's people walking flowers. Pets. You say that like they got a fucking geranium on top of a ferret. <laughs> cars driving by. Cars drive. Nice you know part. it's nice. Cars driving by. <laughs> man, it's nice. Cars driving by. Yeah, man, you know, don't wild drive west. my neighborhood. No, but not. You just drive push, that. Just jump out and push. Ghost ride the whip, man. Just push. <laughs> I don't want to hear nothing. You got that mongoose bike. <laughs> the Flintstones. That's right. Atlanta, were you there when the bombing went off? I was. Were you uh, near the thing, or was just you read about it? On, you actually, see it on the TV. My, my coach was real, st- real stern, man. He he was standing out in the hallway with a baseball bat, trying to keep all those boys in the room. And uh, so we was in the room sleeping, man. And it just woke everybody up. It shook the building like, like somebody crumbling up a garbage bag. It was unbelievable. And we were like, man, what was that? You know, like, so now everybody's up and standing in the hallway looking down, thinking that the building was collapsing. And um, then they, you know, a few minutes later told us a bomb went off in Centennial Park. How far away was Centennial Park from where you were staying? Uh, About a mile and a half. A mile and a half. And it was that, it shook the building. It shook the building. Now, Richard Jewell didn't do it, but we all know his name because he got put through the process and he was the world's most hated man. Like, but we still don't know who did it. Like, we know who did it, but nobody knows the person's name. Man, you know how it is. People don't want to snitch. No, but, but I just say you're stupid. But the fact that everybody I have, knows. I have no clue, man. No, I'm, I'm saying the fact that Richard Jewell was like the famous, like dopey looking guy and they put it on him. And it turns out he's completely innocent. They had nothing to do with it. He was like an actual security guard at Centennial Park. But then they caught the guy that actually did it. No one knows that person. If you say Richard Jewell to a person on the street with the cars driving by, they'll go, oh, that's the guy that bombed the Olympics. But he had nothing to do with it. Nothing to do with it. Uh, it's, it's a hard situation, man. I, I, I wish I was um, in the process of the people that that <laughs> that judged everybody because it's it's funny, like just like you said, this guy, nobody knows who the hell he is. You know, and then you got a guy that's innocent, that's famous for being doing something bad. Yeah. Like, where's the where's the, the group of people that, you know, are able to criticize that? That's what I'm asking you. Yeah, I'm man, I'm just me. I'm a wrestler, man. I'm not in the legal process. How much weight is mental? How much? Give me a number. How much weight can you go up and down lifting with a mental attitude? I would say that it's it's probably sixty five percent. That's impossible. It is. 
You so you telling me if we I... did blind lifting, we we did a lot of scientific studies and biomechanical breakdowns of what the human body can do, and we had guys on our team that sixty percent, seventy percent of what they could do, they would miss. They would miss it if you covered the weight up and they couldn't tell what was on the bar. No, he's just falling asleep over there. He's just chilled out. As soon as he falls asleep, I'm going to get them Cheerios out of his pocket. Just, <laughs> he going he to get jacked. My two-year-old son, Meredith, has Cheerios in his little shirt pocket, like a little tiny baby shirt. <laughs> Mark Henry, just like an addict. Just as soon as they fall asleep, tiny, man. I'm, hungry, I'm just man. jacking for Cheerios, man, straight up. That's hysterical. <laughs> That's what happened before we got on mic is the baby was showing up. He had little Cheerios in his little baby pocket. <laughs> They'll tide you over. So if guys couldn't see how much weight they were lifting. They would miss. Miss. What's that mean, miss? They, 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 couldn't they do wouldn't it? make the lift. I mean, you would put like garbage cans on the ends of the bars, put the bar through it so they couldn't see what was on the bar. And you had to approach the bar like that was the most you had ever lifted. And there were several times where I missed. But then, I, you know, we got, we, we taught, we got taught to feel the bar and to try to lift it with the same technique every time. And it's hard to be able to block all that out and say, okay, I'm going to just close my eyes, I'm going to just touch the bar, and I'm going to just lift it the way that I'm supposed to lift it. And it's, I mean, we're not the only ones that um, do a lot of scientific studies on, on sport. It seems like, yeah, I said it earlier, and I'm sorry to beat it that horse because I want to get into the WWE stuff. It, like, if my max, if I'm benching 200 pounds, and that's all I can do once – you're telling me there's a mental door I can open and I can get up to 240. Yeah. Really? Yes, sir. Wow. You have to teach me I mean, that, it, man. it happens in running. Like, that ain't my Max. Bolt. That's not what I'm saying, man. Well, what was the guy? I can't think of the guy's name. He was um, he ran against Bolt last year. And um, Bolt had the inside lane. Of course, you know, he's always going to have lane four because he's the fastest guy. The guy that's, that was... On the fifth lane, uh, a U.S. guy came back out of suspension. Gay. Uh, his last name was gay. Gay guy? No, he wasn't a gay guy. His last name was gay. Stop oh, I'm sorry. It. Stop it. Stop it. I'm done. Man, they'll, they'll cancel your show in L.A. But cut it out. I'm asking you a question. Go on. You answered but, it. Go but ahead. this guy, he made Bolt nervous and Bolt false started. Bolt ran the slowest time that he had ran that year because he was worried about this new guy coming in that had been coming off suspension. And that was the only time he ran nine, eight. Everything else was like his he, he had a guy next to him that, you know, scared him a little bit and his, he, he tightened up pressure bus pipes. Wow. It is amazing. When Yogi Berra said 90% of this game is half mental. <laughs> you go, ah, Yogi's a nut, but turns out he was, he was onto something. He was onto something. It was a, Awesome quote, though. You go to the WWE, and you start as Sexual Chocolate. That was your first entrance, Sexual Chocolate? Sexual Chocolate was the, the, really the first thing that actually got me over, got me famous. Yeah. Um, I came in, a, you know, red, white, and blue. Mark Henry, the Olympian, you know, that game. It, <laughs> <laughs> nothing. Nobody cared. Nothing. People were like... Yeah, Undertaker. I want to Undertaker, but um, as soon as I kissed the seventy-year-old lady, it was like all love. Then sexual <laughs> it was chocolate. Like I was, I was sexual chocolate. He good. That boy's good. He good. He good. He's so awful. How do you go from sexual chocolate to Mark Henry? Do you have a meeting with Vince uh, McMahon and go, look, man, let me just be me, or do you, you know, get? Such you know what? During that time, like I'm kind of kind of glib i like to play around a lot and i would always flirt with the girls in the office and the girl the you know everybody just hanging around and sweet talk and they were like man you need to do that on tv that's hilarious and and that's how it happened we drove down the road and i was like talking about coming to america and um the uh the guy d that i was riding with at the time he said you should just like Go ahead and call yourself Sexual Chocolate. Yeah. And I was like, well, let's let's do it. Let's tell them. And I told them when I got to the TV that day, and um, they just, first they laughed. They thought I was clowning. 
And I was like, no, nah, I'm going to call myself sex with chocolate. And they're like, all right. How man. long were you sexual chocolate? Like five, four years. Really? That long? Yeah. And then when was the transition from sexual chocolate to just going back to being Mark Henry? Well, I, I got injured and um, I had surgery on my knee and, my you know, it was a lot going on. My my mom died. September 11th came. Um, I was in Louisville, Kentucky. And, um, you know, everything, I got healthy. You know, I got over the fact that my mom passed. I got over to September 11th being angry at the uh, at the world for you know, the tragedy that we went through and I came back and, you know, I started competing again. That's the only thing that took my mind off it is, uh, is to start training. And it's kind of like the the Rocky train. I just, that's all I had. And, um, I, I went and, and won the nationals that year, you know, in 2002 and nationals uh, at weightlifting, the nationals and powerlifting, powerlifting and, uh, qualified for the world's strongest man. And uh, went to Columbus to the Arnold Classic and, and and won it. Beat the top eight strong men in the world. You Your dad died when you were young. At, what, you were 12 when your dad died? Yeah, I was 12. He died of diabetes? Yeah. Do you ever worry because of your size that you'll die of diabetes? No. I don't think I'm ever going to die. Never? I don't think about dying. Well, nobody goes undefeated, partner. Hey, I know Father Time is undefeated. Elvis I'm Presley's saying, dead as fuck. Yeah, I'm going to be the guy the that walk down the street and just fall the hell out. I'm, <laughs> it's not because I thought about it. I don't stress about much. My wife right there, man, she'll tell you. She absorbed the stress, and I live. I have a good time in my life. I'm Your having a blast. Lower than yours? Perfect. You got low blo- you, so you got no sugar, nothing? Nothing. You're fine. And you're because you're. I'm asking you because you're an enormous, and you're not like a fat guy. You're like an. Inc- <laughs> you're in huge, incredible shape. People go on YouTube and see you doing push-ups. There's like one in there. Pull up. Pull up. One pull up. The Come nice on, video. Man. I no. did more than one. <laughs> I know. Break. See, yeah, you don't make me cry. I'm sensitive. Oh, last time you cried, you beat the shit out of John Cena. So please don't <laughs> cry in this garage, you big fuck. This guy is on TV. Let me break down this story for the listener. <laughs> Matty Boy and I are watching the Stanley Cup playoffs right here. Who was coming by the podcast that night? Do you remember? <laughs> I think it was Barry. Was it Barry? Uh, ba- yes. Barry, Barry Katz, Katz was Katz. coming over. Man. My manager, Barry Katz, Man. was coming over. Industry Standard. Make sure you go to iTunes and subscribe <laughs> to the Industry Standard. <laughs> what the fuck, man? Carlton Fisk is supposed to have the fucking over on that. <laughs> All right. So we're watching the Stanley Cup playoffs. You text me, and I'm retiring tonight on WWE Monday Night Raw. Don't miss it. I look at your Twitter feed. Man, first of all, Mark Henry's Rolodex, it's like an agent at CAA. You, man, you reached out to Jamie Foxx. You reached out to like 80 celebrities. Like, wait, like, I ain't shit. These guys are like so – I'm not making a joke. These guys are so A-list, so top shelf. And you're like – Shit's getting real, dog. Like, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay, that's too bad. But what people don't understand, I told Stone Cold Steve Austin this when he was sitting here. He goes, I smelled a rat. You got the world's champion sitting there as window dress, and I said, I smell a fucking rat. No way. So he says he smelled a rat. But here's the thing I tried to explain to Stone Cold Steve Austin. Mark Henry, you're such a good actor. You ran a game on me. I'm your friend. And two <laughs> weeks out, you said, man, my knees are so shot. I'm so tired. You're in Austin, Texas. I'm so tired of waking up in pain, Jay. I'm going to retire. It's going to be on Monday Night Raw. It's, that was it's true. emotional. That what do you mean it was true? And what, they just wrote in the script that you're going to f- fucking slam John Cena? Don't, don't fucking bullshit me now. This is the podcast. Put your name on it. You knew a month out when you were telling me, man, these, I'm tired of these knees hurting, waking up in pain. I want to spend time with my family, Jay Moore. You knew then that you were stringing me along like a pro. <laughs> Right? I did. On my son's Cheerios. I <laughs> hey, I want to go on the line right now. I apologize. No, don't apologize. That was amazing. That was some of the best acting in the world. Man, you were on the phone with me. I'm like, man, this Arsenio, poor guy. Arsenio said, you used me. Yeah, you used me all right. <laughs> but you know what? If you're going to get used by Mark Henry, it's best to do it over the phone. <laughs> you don't want to be a cellmate. End up like a, end up like a Kleenex. I just usually like just... <laughs> Throw you away. <laughs> <laughs> so you're out there. Where did they film that WWE Monday Night Raw? Uh, that Raw. It was a weird man. place. Was it Ohio? I can't How do you not remember, remember this? You walked yeah, out in a suit. You're carrying your boots. You lay your boots down on the side of the ring. You go in. You tell everybody. 
And uh, you start crying in the ring. And I said to Matty Boy, I go, that's probably just sugar fucking dripping out of his eyes, this big bastard. No, oh, man, that's talent. <laughs> it was talent. I'm telling everybody right now, that shit was bananas great. And then at the radio show also, I mean, he's got chops. At the radio show, we yeah. all thought that you, you were going to crack Dan Byer in the face. Yeah, Dan Byer is our update anchor. And we called him the world's strongest man. And he, I made him talk. I did a pretty good game myself. You did good. And you were listening on the iHeartRadio app, on the radio, on the airplane, all the way up. And you came into the studio and you just you said to Dan Byer that you were going to kill him. And I thought for a second, is this guy going to fucking kill my up there? Like, you had me, and I'm the one that set it up with you. Yeah. You're such a good actor, you had me really going. So I got to say, out of all the guys in the WWE, I think out of all of them, Mark Henry, you definitely have a life after wrestling in Hollywood. Because you, that was amazing. I'm trying to get out of here, man. And like, you know, my, my, my wife has finally said, okay, if you're going to give it a shot, you know, let's do it. Miss Janet, you gotta let you gotta let him run. You know, we gotta let the dog run in the yard. You can't get acting man. jobs in Austin, man. Silby, Texas ain't gonna. What are you hey, gonna hey, do? hey, 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 hey! Watch out now. What? Silsby, Texas Silsby, people Texas. will hunt you down. They'll find this beautiful. How do you know what I was gonna say about the state? It? It's a compound. Silsby, <laughs> where is Silsby? Silsby's on the border of Texas, Louisiana. It's like in oh. the in the Golden Triangle. Golden, how? Who named they it come, that? Well, because you got Beaumont, Port Arthur, and Orange. It's like the biggest cities in the southeast. So did you, how long out did you know that you were going to take John Cena and just slam him through the damn ring? Because you almost killed him. About man. a month. A month. Hey, why would you run your friend like that, man? You could have let me in. I could have had a <laughs> no, good WWE secret. I, don't, I, I, I didn't tell her either. Really? Yeah. You didn't tell Miss Janet? I told her I was retiring. So when you saw, we you handle your mic. When you saw him, when you saw your husband Mark Henry body slam John Cena and go, "You thought it was gonna be that easy?" Did you go, "This son of a gun"? I was like, "Thank God, we've got mortgage payments." <laughs> 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 Hallelujah! But it took our seven-year-old some time to regroup and realize that Dad wasn't retiring. He screamed, he cried. It was awful. So the kid wants you to retire? No, no, he he, he want me to keep wrestling. He's a he's a fanatic, man. Jacob. Yes. Oh my God, Jacob is the most like I'm gonna tweet some pictures of him. The the look on his face before uh, the the pay per view and 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 after. I mean, he folded his arms and cried. That Not I the lost. John Cena time when you who'd oh. you lose to? Oh, you mean the? Uh, I didn't see the pay per view. Oh well, Cena of course beat me. Oh, that was the Money Bank one. Yeah, money in the bank. And you lost to John Cena at the money bank? Yeah. He money was in the bank? Pissed. <laughs> you Crying son, pissed. You just breed your son to hate white people. <laughs> Daddy got beat up by a white guy at work. No. Joanna, didn't, Joanna was like, mm, John I, Cena won. I, I like John. John Cena. He cute. Oh, oh. I'm like, you going to you're not going to Ivy League school. You keep <laughs> cheering for the competition. That's that's what Ivy League school is to you, just a bunch of guys look like John Cena walking around oh, with God. denim jeans and no shirt. They they're gonna be looking more like Steve Jobs than John Cena. That's right. So now, how long are you in the mix for now? You just gonna ride it out? Like, or, or, I can't get a straight answer out of you. No, I signed a, I signed a three year deal. All right. So from so this I'm, moment of this podcast, we know you're gonna be in the WWE for I'm, three years. For at least three years. Paid in full. Eric B and Rock Kim. Look at you, man. Yeah, man. I got raised and everything. Really? Yeah. Well, come on out to L.A. West Coast, man. Let's do this. I'm trying. I'm trying. Let's gotta, do life gotta too. Got to give me an agent. And, Manager and all I would love stuff. to work with you, man. I'd be honored. I'll get you with Barry Katz in two seconds. Easy. Get That's easy. Here. I'm serious. Barry, straighten you up. All right. We, we need to talk then. Uh, how long in the morning do you put product? I'm, this is, I'm, it sounds like I'm clowning, but I'm not. Do you put product in your beard? I, I oil it up, man. You do, right? Yeah. I can tell. It looks tight. It's moist. What is in there? <laughs> Margarine? It's just juices and berries. <laughs> what? Juices and berries? <laughs> Margarine. <laughs> Baby, pass the toast and give me some of that butter. Mm, just rub toast all. <laughs> <laughs> what just do you rub, put in just it? Just rub the butter in. Give me the, where's the Pam? <laughs> you come out of the shower and start blasting yourself. Spray the, it. Spray Pam into your beard. <laughs> and then the Cheerio, you know there's Cheerios in that pocket right there. The, what, in your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> the baby's He's gone. looking around He's looking right around. Now, Where'd the baby go? Where'd the baby? You gonna eat my baby? I want the baby back. I want the baby. 
This is you and the rock. This is you, a photo of you and the rock. Will you I'll let me give you Maddie Boy's uh text and we'll put it up on the Tumblr page. That's when we we live together. We we were both the first two developmental talents that the WWE ever produced. You're a big dude. I'm Holy cute. Smith. Yeah. Twenty five. That's you at twenty five years prime. old. In prime. How old do you know? Forty two. Me too. 42 years old. You got a three-year deal. You know what? We should all be so lucky at 42 to sign a nice big three-year deal. You know what? They, they're they not floating around. I'm it, the oldest guy in the company right now working. Do you want to be known as WWE superstar? Do you want to be known as an Olympian? Do you want to be known as a dad? Do you want to be known as an actor? When you it's all what? said and done and the big man calls your number, what do you want to be? I, would, I want to be known as um, a great dad more than anything. Um it's a kids, you know, young men find it uncool to be a dad. I think I, 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 it's very cool to me. I mean, I, I enjoy my time with my kids, and that was one of the things. Of course, I, I used it to lure people in, but um, I mean, I was serious about that. Like, I, I love being at home with my kids. You know, we we played. I got you know, I was pissed yesterday, pissed as at the. Highest of festivity <laughs> because I get a call and a and a video that my daughter swam for the first time without the floaties on. Like I miss all that kind of stuff. So it, it kind of is who's at home with the kids? Mom, twenty four oh. hours a day. Yeah, she she says good. Get him out of the house. Yeah, she you know she trying to get me out of the house. But keep, she's here with you now. So who's with the kids now? Grandmother. Who, yours or hers? Hers. Her mom? Yeah, my, my mom Oh, that's, is, I'm an idiot. You just said your mom passed away. See that? I'm, I'm out here, yeah, man. I'm out. This is some bullshit. <laughs> Kids are at home with a ghost. Jesus. Wow, see that? I ain't gonna slap him. I ain't gonna slap him. Why? I'm, just sitting over here. I'm making fun of my own mistake, Mark Henry. What I said was stupid. Don't do that run on me, you fool. I can't take it. Uh... <laughs> Who in the WWE is there? I know you had your feuds with The Undertaker, and that's like a big cat and a fun character. But is there anybody you like, man, I wish, like, no joke, if I had my druthers, I could have just taken this guy on, and we could have had, like, a lifelong battle. Who's, I guess, The Rock, because he's the top, right? Yeah, well, we had our, we had our issues, and, you know, the, the couple of times that we worked, I, I beat him like a drum, but now he's, uh, he's The Rock. He's untouchable. Yeah, he bulletproof. He lays I'd the golden eggs. Have to, it's like a quarterback. Hit him with a crowbar in the back and hurt his knee or something. Like Nancy get Kerrigan. My, get, get my Kerrigan on. So who, is there anybody in the WWE you wish you had a feud with because you just don't get along with? You know with? what? All, uh, not now. I mean, it's, everything is squashed. I used to have issues with Bradshaw. but um, Who's Bradshaw? John Bradshaw John Layfield. Bradshaw. He's a great wrestler, was champion. What were your uh, issues? He was in the acolytes with Ron Simmons. Um, you know, when I was young, in those pictures, he used to pick on me. And as you know, like ribbon is a part of wrestling. They, you know, that's the way they show kind of a a fondness for you. They play practical jokes on you. They put your wrestling gear in plastic bags and throw it in the back of the shower and turn all the showers on. You know, like. Empty all your bags, all your luggage out, and put water in your luggage, and just stupid stuff. I'd, and, I'd um, get arrested if I if people haze me like that. Oh, look, they haze me like, and I couldn't handle. I wanted to fight everybody, <laughs> and and uh, they were like, "Look, man, you got to quit trying to fight everybody." Like Jesus, like it's we we trying to like be brothers with you. You know, and and it took a while for me to understand that. And John is one of the people I respect the most in the business now. Then why'd you guys have beef? Well, because he picked on me. I'm just, you know, I'm just not. I wasn't. I'm. Well, I'm, I'm sensitive. I just wasn't used to people picking on me. Because one, like most people, kind of like see me, and the last thing they're thinking of is, is man, I'm gonna go fuck with Mark Henry. <laughs> That's Robin the last Harris. Thing. Robin Harris would take you apart. Fuck Tiny. <laughs> I love them. Yeah, I can tell. Oh, I love God. them too. Just like George Wallace. Whoop you when I want to kick your ass too. 
do when I think of you think I love you. Love uh, you. People are like, I have no idea what these two dudes are talking about. But you man, and I you know. You have got to. But you and I know. Go back and Google Robin Harris. Bebe's Kids. Bebe Kids. Not the cartoon, the record. Every little step you take going to be around this bedroom night. <laughs> I used to love Robin. Mama, that going to be a new daddy? Hell no. I'm here for the night, motherfucker. Sit down. <laughs> Talking shit to a little kid. So crazy and oh awful. Oh, my God. I can't Mama, remember all that. Mama, is that going to be a new daddy? Hell no. <laughs> I'm here for the night, motherfucker. Sit down. He says that to a fucking five-year-old kid. The kid's crying. That going to be a new daddy? <laughs> oh. oh, my goodness. It seems like, well, it doesn't seem like it is. I say this I say this on my radio show. I talk about race all the time. Like, to be black in the United States, it's got to be like being in the damn Twilight Zone. I tell people, anybody that'll listen, like, why is it always got to be about race? Because if you're black, it is always about it race. Is. It is. There's no way around it. The reason it. that you're here in the first place is, you know, is, is that's, that's is a racial issue. You know, we weren't indigenous to this country. We had, People came from their homelands, uh, from in Africa and uh, South America and places, and came here to work. You know, that's it's always going to be an issue. It seems odd to me that the WWE, and I'm not asking you to talk trash about your employers, but it seems they just can't. This is my impression of years of watching wrestling. Guys like Tony Atlas, there's been great black wrestlers lineage is incredible but it seems like the wwe just can't get itself to pull the trigger on a black champion and keep him there it, it's almost they like the, they keep you're the intercontinental champion like that's the consolation prize but to be the guy the top of the heap it just seems like there's a reluctance and the wwe is so i think the rock, the rock would have been that guy but you know hollywood was just he had to do it if he if he didn't go then all right, but black. He's like Lena Horn, black. Like Lena Horn was black, but she'd never let you know it. Lena Horn, he be black like, light. He's black. He's diet black. You're fucking <laughs> black. Like you are like an oil spill, bro. I I am Miles Davis black. Yes, you are. You know what? That's about as black. He's blacker than James Brown. I, what is the chart? No, nobody's black than James Brown. <laughs> James, not the color. Not the color. I'm talking about exactly James Brown mean. is. In the dictionary on the black man's yeah. picture, James Brown. All right, let's go through the chart. So James Brown, no one's blacker than James Brown. Not no, there isn't the an African he clicking said, and clacking James alive. James Brown said that I am too black to be white. <laughs> he said that. I didn't make it up. Well, I didn't say it was smart what he said. It's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. It, well, you I'm know, too James, black to be white. He said, "Sold me out for chicken change." Show you know, me I mean, I mean James Big said payback. some stuff. You know, I mean that's. I, I love him. That's like one of my favorite artists. But Miles Davis has to be like number one A. He can't be like second place. That motherfucker is black, right? <laughs> He's a black man. So it's James Brown, Miles Davis, and then Mark Henry's got to be third. I'm, I'm in there. I'm top three. Do you get penalized for marrying a black woman? No, not at all. Because James Brown, Miles Davis, they both got like white women. That's like the that that's like the the sideways. I have to go back to ch- the. Um, coming to America, black and the bear is the sweet of the juice. Oh, she was blacker than a motherfucker too. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you put Jim Brown on the chart of black? Who's that? Jim Brown. Jim Brown. Who is that? Uh, <laughs> Sorry to get obscure Jim Brown, on you. Jim Brown is an activist. Anybody that that holds uh, activists along with being. Uh, celebrity, entertainer, musician, uh, they they black too. That's, that's, All right, but that's you didn't answer my question. The chart goes James Brown. J- James Brown. I'm, is the blackest man that ever walked the planet, right? Manu Bowling got shit on James Brown. No. And, right? no yeah, he's, okay. he's a man. So it's James Brown and is Miles Davis second place? I, I'm not this, talking about the color. I'm no, talking about the I, action. Brother, I'm, you, hey, Look at me. I'm telling you. I know exactly what you're talking about. I'm not talking about the shade of the guy. Isaac Hayes is in there, too. Yeah. You think Ooh, about Black Love, yeah. man. That's Isaac yeah. Hayes. <laughs> That's I good. loved him. He was a big wrestling fan. And, um, I mean, just give you words of advice. Now, save your money. He had that. His voice was ridiculous. I can't even mimic it. It's like, you know you got to save your money. He was always giving your daddy advice. Don't ever open a restaurant, son. <laughs> Put your money in real estate. God ain't making any more of it. 
Yeah, that kind of stuff. So, and I, look, I know exactly what you mean. Like, I've had this discussion with other people. But I, but so, I know what you mean. Right. When you're saying the black, like, no one's blacker than James Brown. I'm with you. Guy wrote Payback for crying out loud. It's a sex machine. Yeah. Uh, James Brown, Miles Davis, and then I, mm, Isaac Hayes, Miles Davis, you flip-flop him? Yeah, you might have to because, you know, like, the jazz and the coolness of Miles was just like, you know, hey, baby, how you doing? I don't think Miles ever said it like that. I think he said, like, <laughs> get the fuck out of my studio. <laughs> Snapped her in the head. You like turn him in. <laughs> oh, uh, Miles? He was bananas. Oh, my God. He got a lot of shit for performing concerts. He would always have his back to the audience. And people, they would try to throw, again, going back to race, like, a white guy, they'd be like, wow, look how he just is like the master of his band, keeping on. But like a black guy, they'd go, man, he had his back to us. Isn't that fucked up? And then Miles Davis never really did interviews, but he said, I can't communicate. Tony Williams is 18 years old. He's on drums. I just pulled this kid out of high school. I can't tell him about a change, but if I look at him, I can get him to go and change with me. And my and Cannibal Adderley and John Coltrane, if I look at these cats, I can get them to court change just by an eye look without doing anything. Right. I'm facing you guys doing my fucking satchmo routine, trying to keep everybody happy, mopping my fucking head with a handkerchief. The, the wheels are going to fall off behind me. Right. So, WWE, how come there's not a black champion? You know what? I was champion. Ron Simmons was champion. Uh, as far as time, it takes a long time to to know what I know. And I, I think that um, the time has just passed. We got to recruit. And I, I've, I've been working with talent development over the last two years now. And, and we're trying to hunt young, handsome, athletic, smart people. And, and I should have probably said smart first because um, it's, it's a psychology-driven business. You got to take people on the emotional ride. If you are not smart enough to um, pull that crowd in and uh, give them some swerves here and there, you can't do this business. And I'm one of the few that's still able to work with anybody. I don't have to talk to you. I see you in the ring. And it's going to go down. And people are going to leave there feeling like, man, I got my money's worth. We We don't have a lot of that. And, um, you know, to just to be honest, a lot of the uh, young black kids that uh, that, that we're con con recruiting, it made me feel good. <laughs> you know, it made me feel great, you know. It made me feel yeah, great. That's the first. That's the you best. You know, like, we, we, we trying to recruit them. They, they playing football, man. They playing yeah. basketball. They they on the Olympic team, uh, you know, for different sports. So uh, it's just it's hard to get in the cream of the crop. Is it more fun to be a heel or more fun to be the hero? Heel. Really? To be, I sometimes when like right now, if 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 I have to smile and hug somebody one more time, I'm through it. In my heart of hearts, I want to put my foot in somebody's throat and raise my hand and spit at people. Iron Sheik had the best gig of all time, probably of all time. Iran, number one. <laughs> Just spitting in the ring. Is he doing his own Twitter account? Do you think? There's no you know, way I, he's doing that. I think that. The, the, the young guys that uh, handle him uh, have a lot to do with it, but he is who he is. He has always been that guy. I called up the Opie and Anthony radio show and told them to meet me outside and fight me. I was here. And they're in New York. I just called up and said, why don't you come outside? I'll kick your fucking ass. He goes, fuck you, you fucking piece of shit. And then he immediately, the next sentence, I'll fuck you in your ass, make you humble, humble, camel clutch, 10-inch cock. He just kept telling me how big his dick was and he was going to have sex with me over and over again. Like, that's his way of beating <laughs> me up. That's the way he, he's going to use you. Yeah, but it ain't jail. We're not in jail. We're not, hey. not like we're arguing at the chow line. It's He's on a fucking radio show. But it's so funny, though. It is hysterical. I mean, like, if you say, mention Hulk Hogan or you mention B. Brown Blair, he goes off in a way, like, 
they disrespected him or something. But he, and yeah, he you don't say Joey Fatone, and he's like, "Fuck Joey Fatone." Who is this new he kids is- in the block? Fuck sucking ten inch cock for Donnie Wahlberg. You like people on his radar that have no business being on the Iron Cheeks radar. <laughs> he just goes. Frank out. Stallone, dick suck, fuck him. <laughs> Why aren't you in the Expendables? Man, I'm not in Hollywood, man. I'm I'm trying to get out of here, man. What's the difference between trying to get out of here and just getting out here? What's well, the difference between you just getting your I ass work, on a plane and getting an apartment? Well, see, the thing is, is I work like 160 days a year. So does everybody else in the WWE that's making movies in Hollywood. Yeah, but nobody's making movies in Hollywood except for Dwayne. Batista had to quit to come out here and, well, I guess Stone Cold and be a success. Too, yeah. Steve is retired. And, um, uh, you know, there's other, you know, people that are, you know, trying to get it in. But, you know, they not me. What's the dumbest storyline anybody ever ran past you that you had to kibosh? You had to say, no, I, this is too stupid for words in the WWE. Because to me, when they had that commissioner box come down from the ceiling, there was like a stupid little computer going, I want you to find Seamus in the uh, eh, man. Oh I'm like, God. this the, is the, some Saturday morning cartoon the bullshit. General manager, that, that was, the general manager? Man, it was, was a little it was, box. It was like an Etch-A-Sketch that would come down from the roof and it'd be like, you must find Mark Henry. Beep, beep, beep. And people were standing there talking to it like these fucking guys like said to Vince McMahon, like, yeah, let's do it. I think it's a great idea. You know what, man? I think that had to be Vince's idea because anybody else would have got fired for that. <laughs> it was the general manager was a computer box. That knew how to talk. Did they ever like... GTV was stupid too. GTV was weird. Well, so was MVP. He's a little weird too. MVP is all right. Yeah, it looks like he has Bell's palsy the way he lifts his face up like this. Wow. You, are, you, are you... Are we talking about the same person? The brother. Wow. When he does that funny smile and he lifts half his face up, guy looks like Buddy Hackett. <laughs> 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 I'll whoop you when I want to. Oh, my God. I'll kick your ass down. Who are the young cats in the WWE that we should all be watching and they're they're keeping the spirit of what you do alive? Like Daniel Bryan. Daniel Brown? Daniel Bryan. Bryant. Is Speak up, son. Unbelievable. Daniel Bryant. Yes, sir. Is he related Daniel to Lane Bryant? Bryan. Bryan. Any relation to Lane Bryant? <laughs> She's a big girl, huh? <laughs> <laughs> How much she weigh? Me? Her. Her, Lane Bryant. I seen two big bitches like you in the mall today. We all got Lane Bryant talking about, I want to see some fit me. Damn, I would too. Size 13. <laughs> Stiletto. I seen two big bitches like you in the mall today. <laughs> We're just going to do Robin Harris all day. <laughs> I would love to. I'd love to. Uh, so, Daniel Bryan. That's your Unbelievable. guy. Unbelievable. Um, I think Damian Sandow, he was, he was a good entertainer. I mean, he keeps your attention. Needs to toughen up a little bit, and I've told him. I was like, man, you're going to get trivialized if you don't toughen up. Toughen up how? Sometimes you just got to, like, you know, you got to have an edge. You got to push people around. You got to bully people. You got to be a little bit stiff. You ever been in a match and you thought, this guy's going a little too hard now? Yeah, Who? a bunch of times. Shameless. Goes a little too hard? But, no, and- he ain't going too hard. It's like, if you give it, I'm going to give it back. And, and it, it makes it – me and Seamus have a natural chemistry. He's, a, he's another one of the young guys that's going to carry the business uh, for a long time. It, it, very good. Don't mind getting hit and, you know, will not cry if you slap hell out of him. When you kicked Dan Beyer in my radio station studio, I swear I thought you really kicked Dan Beyer in the ribs. Uh, and I got to tell the listener out there, if you ever just flip through WWE and you catch it on TV, if it's not your thing, whatever. I ain't trying to convert you, and neither is Mark. But I will say this. With my eyes from five feet away, I was convinced that Mark Henry had kicked my news anchor in the ribs who was on the ground. I would, it made a sound. Like you see it on TV, and some guys are better at it than others. You, I even said to Maddie Boy, I thought he really kicked the fucking guy in the ribs. <laughs> that was one of the best sells ever. You're a natural actor, man. You got to get out to L.A., and we got to make life, too. Just so you can say, how about I eat your cornbread? <laughs> make believe I have cornbread right here, and I'm in jail. We'll write it. We'll do it together. You going to eat that cornbread? No, you actually. Here you go. That's for you. 
Goddamn cornbread. I, I had to ask you anyway. Should have gave it to me when you saw me, motherfucker. Now we're talking. What are some of the dumbest nicknames in the history of the WWE? Kajarni. Who's Kajarni? Like I said. Kajarni. You never was, heard that stuff. It, it, it was like horrible. The- <laughs> he, was, he was supposed to be a carny. Like, you know, we call the guys that run the circus and guys in wrestling. Yeah. That set up everything. He had like breathe fire and had this circus type of atmosphere music. The music, da, 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 like it was. <laughs> Jarny. Hey, he never made an appearance. Oh, never got the TV. So they just had him on the undercard of like in the Greater Ohio Valley. <laughs> I think he did like a, a couple of dark matches, and they was like, you know, we really we we, we reaching. We need to put the. Cup- Put the kibosh on this right away. Did they rebrand them? Because that happens a lot no, in this business. They just gone. rebranded it. He was gone. Like, wow, but if, didn't he have skill? It was just because it was so. He was, he was all right, but um, you know, <clears throat> just he couldn't find nothing after that. And he wasn't a huge guy. You know, he was you know probably about one hundred seventy five pounds. Oh. And, you know, kind of acrobatic. We we got about a hundred of them. A lot of guys, they seem to be getting lighter and lighter because the Giants, like you, are far and few between. You watch old school like WWF and Jimmy Snuka, 6'5", 250. He's all of it. He's huge. Like, you can't believe how huge these dudes are. You can because you know what I'm talking yeah. about. Even like Don Morocco just looked like somebody's Italian dad out in the yard in Queens, New the York. Rock. He the real he, rock. He the was, original rock. Yeah. He wasn't, like, cut up. He was the just big, big. Ju- huge dude. He'll Billy Jim. Ho. Uh, Hacksaw Jim Duggan, Hillbilly Jim. All of, all of which are over 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, 300 pounds Big in John their prime. Stott, 6'10". Yeah. And, of course, you grew up idolizing Andre the Giant, as yes, you sir. should. Now, is it true or is this folklore that you tried to touch Andre the Giant at a wrestling match, fell down, he picked you up and put you back to that's, the seat? That's true. That really happened? That happened. W- I see these kids run to the barricade now, and I, I think about it every time. I love the story. Go on. Do it. I mean, I, I I don't never, you know, now we're not allowed to put our hands on nobody. It's $70,000 fine if, <laughs> if you're going to reach out there in the crowd. You're going to get fined. Really? Yeah. Because someone we will wind up suing the WWE. And right, say, because like, he then, touched then my they'll titty. sue anything. Yeah, that's the boys. He touched my titty. He touched my titty. And his big fucking John Cena t-shirt. He said t-shirt. it with a lisp, too. He touched my titty. He touched my titty. <laughs> big fat kid in a John Cena t-shirt with a stupid foam finger. How about uh, you can't see me is the least scary thing in the world. It's like, no, I can see you, dude. You're fucking like, right in like, front of me doing this stupid like shit with your hand in your face. I like the way when him and Rock was going at it and Rock started like picking on him like, you can't see me. I see you. you see me. <laughs> like that was the funniest thing in the world. So this thing rolls along. This circus that is the WWE, it, 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 it ain't going anywhere. No. You're They're so- kids in uh, – we're in the ring the other day uh, before the show, and I thought it was one of the one of the best things I ever saw. Really, Hunter's Hunter's daughter was in the ring. Man, it was awesome. She it looked like she just got it. She but see, just that's a natural. The thing with the girls, and she'll bring... be running the business. With, oh yeah, <laughs> she'll be running the business when my son is in his prime. Are you grooming Jacob to be a... Jacob, that's all he wants to do. I mean, if he wants to do it, I'm going to make sure that he does it at the at the highest level or that's, don't do it at all. That's not a bad hook, like how like Siddhartha and the Dalai Lama were like children when they were like anointed and appointed and all that. If you had like a 15-year-old, like just man baby, just like a big-ass <laughs> fucking 15-year-old, because you were like six foot, 300 pounds in, in, when you were a freshman in high school. Yeah. So why not just have like a, a 14-year-old world champion? That'd be That's never been done. Just break all child labor laws. Have like the man child come in, play the crazy. Oh, man play his music. Here we come, the man child. And he's from parts unknown. He don't eat right, don't look right. His head, half his head's all fucked up and shaved. Teach him how to do one crooked eye. Oh my man god, man child, look out, man child's coming. I think he got to carry the name though. Man child? Oh, Henry. Who said it's got? Why can't it be my kid? Well, your kid actually is a man child. <laughs> He's a I, look, we need to post a picture of Jay. I don't think it's Jay's baby. He's been up a lot on that Twitter. That is the biggest kid 
He's two, two years, years old. old. I'm he's soft. huge. Well, he walks around with food in his pocket. He's, <laughs> in case he's, in case there's an emergency between breakfast and lunch, he got a pocket full of fucking cereal in case something breaks out. Let me put these in here. I might yeah. go walk around the house. It's, <laughs> I'm gonna go in the other room. I better take this with me. I, I think you don't he, give a I shit about fruit. I think <laughs> he's a, yeah. He's. That he's like Wolverine. Sh- you don't give a shit about fruits or vegetables. Just straight meat, potatoes, and Cheerios. Hey, I got to get my carbs in. Get my <laughs> yeah. energy up. He literally had food in his pocket because he's going <laughs> in another room. I didn't realize how weird that was until you just pointed it out to me. My, Henry, my son had food in his pocket because he left the kitchen. Man, I love that, though. I love he's a that. good boy. And... uh your son uh, is obviously, you got him up and running out in Silsby and in, in greater Austin area, getting them into the acting and doing everything right. And uh, the fact that you're a good dad makes me very happy. A- 